What is up, family? Thank you for tuning in. This is Living Beyond the Dream podcast where we're having practical conversations to take the dreams you have for your church and yourself and turning them into a reality. My name is Mike. I'm joined with my man, Tyler. First off, I want to say thank you for everybody yeah. that's been listening, that's been subscribing. Man, we've been getting so much love from you guys. Yeah. It has been a blessing. I want to encourage you, if this has been blessing you, go ahead and review that on that podcast. It really helps us get this reach out. And also, share it, man. If this is going to be an episode that blesses someone that you know that would impact their life, man, get that share out. It really means the world to us. We're just trying to help as many people as possible. Yeah. And today... Episode 10. Tyler, what are we breaking down today? Today we're going to be talking about being solution-oriented. I think as leaders, uh, a huge part of our job is problem solving. Mm -hmm. But some leaders, that's where it stops, is is they can identify a problem and then that's it. Yeah. Um, But today I want to talk about how important it is that when we do identify a problem, we also identify a solution. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, Mike, to start out, why is it important to be solution-oriented? Well, the reality is, is I found most people are problem oriented. They're not solution oriented. Yeah. And what I mean by that is everybody can find problems. Yeah. Everybody can look around and go, oh, I don't like that. Or that's not working. Or you could be better at that. Like it's easy to be a critic. It's hard to be solution minded. Yeah. It's hard to see something that's not working and then say, okay, well, how can we attach a solution to make it working? Yeah. Everybody can be critical. Very few people's found the art of being constructive. Yeah. And so what we need is to develop a culture of bringing problems with a solution slant to it. So we see and identify things that are working, but we're not going to complain about it. We're going to bring it with the idea that I'm going to follow it up with a solution. Mm -hmm. So that problem can now become a testimony. Yeah. That problem that once was holding us back can now be something we fix that's excelling us and moving us forward. Yeah. I think a common misconception for many leaders is if I had X amount of dollars, I could solve X, Y, Z problems. Uh, But why is it scary that that is an unhealthy mindset? Well, yeah, that's, I mean, what we like to do, and the reason why most of us are problem oriented is that we think the quick fix is the ultimate fix. So we always look at a Band-Aid solution to the problem, right? So we always say, well, if I had X, Y, Z, and you fill in the blank, then everything in my life would be better, and my organization would be growing, right? If I had a new building, or if I had this much money, or if I had their kind of staff members that they have, then everything would be great. The problem with that is that puts a Band-Aid over the problem. It never heals the problem. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, that Band-Aid's going to fall off, and it's going to expose that problem again. And this is what we all do. I've done this. I remember... This is how dumb I was. I remember I remember when we were about a year old as a church, maybe a little bit, about probably a year, year and a half old, and we were going through the problems financially yeah. that every church plant goes through yeah. because you're seeing hundreds of people come to know Jesus that have no experience in church. So this idea of giving is is a foreign concept to them. Mm-hmm. So you're you're seeing the growth, but your resources aren't up there and you're stressed and you're you're pressing the max and and at this point when we were in facilities that were above our means, but it was the cheapest facilities available, but we yeah. felt called to this area. And I remember in my mind going, if I just had $10,000, everything would be fine. Yeah. I remember physically, like literally looking to get a $10,000 loan to bail us out of a problem. I mean, it's dumb, like yeah. stupid. But in my mind, that was the answer to all the problems, right? Mm-hmm. Like that was it. it was like, I just need some money. I need a quick fix. This get is in there. The reality was that wasn't the problem. Right. And of course, thank goodness I didn't get that loan. Thank goodness I peeled back the curtain to realize what was really going on. Yeah. And thank goodness I addressed things because what could have happened is that $10,000 loan could have put us into a hole that would have multiplied to bigger problems because I wasn't willing to be problem-oriented yeah. or solution-oriented. I was I was identifying a problem and wanted a Band-Aid fix instead of really being honest with what was going on. Yeah. Well, and I think we've even said this in an earlier episode, you know, the, the creative aspect with you know, not having the funds, Mm. um, a lack of funds breeds creativity, that's right, uh, which is just so powerful to actually wrap your mind around. And and once you get that aspect, you'll see, you'll see growth from there. Well, the reason why is because it's, it's not the fact that you need to walk around with a poverty mindset, Mm -hmm. but the reality is there's always more than one answer to a problem. Yeah. And sometimes your first response isn't the correct response. Yeah. And sometimes you need to be looking at it from multiple angles so you can find the right answer 
not just an answer. Yeah. And when you look at it with a problem-oriented solution, you're just looking for the quick release, right? Mm-hmm. You just want that quick relief. You just want that first thing to make that problem go away. And, and you're more just wanting to escape something instead of grow from something. Yeah. But when you're solution-oriented, what you'll do is you say, I don't want just an answer. I want the right answer. Yeah. And so you're going to be attacking it with a different mindset. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be looking at, okay, not what's going to just give me temporary relief, but what's going to set us up for years down the road. Yeah. And listen to me. I know in the emotional state, that's not easy. Sure. In this stress where you feel like all the way to the world's on your shoulders, that's not easy. I get it. I've been there many times. Yeah. I've literally broke down in that moment when I'm talking about needing that I broke down sobbing on the floor yeah. weeping thinking I was a failure as a leader thinking I ruined our church thinking thinking maybe I got it wrong and it was in that moment that prayerfully I sought God it was in that moment God really just shook me up and was telling me hey get up yeah. And then he started telling me to look behind the curtain. Yeah. And I started getting my head wrapped around the facts of what was really going on because there were some things in the accounting side of things I wasn't realizing was happening, I thought was happening. Yeah. And so, it, but if I would have just looked at the surface problem and not dug deeper, mm-hmm. I would have found ourselves two to three years into a deeper mess than just the year and a half. Yeah. But the reality was is that when we want just a quick solution to our issues, sometimes we don't pick the right solution. Yeah, We just pick the easiest or the quickest, and that's not always long-term success for you. Yeah, that's a good segue into, into my next question. I've heard it said that you can solve it quick or you can solve it right. Okay. Um, so what's your take on the importance of taking a step back gathering the facts before jumping into a solution. Yeah, I mean, that kind of builds a little bit off of what we just said. But the reality is, is that a lot of times we just want it to go away. Yeah. And sometimes we think out of sight, out of mind, it just makes everything better. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind doesn't make it disappear. Yeah. It actually gives it breathing room to grow. Mm-hmm. So when you keep ignoring a problem and sweeping it under a rug, what you're doing is you're just allowing it to have breathing room to grow. Yeah. Right? It's kind of like mold. It grows in damp, dark places. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when we try to push things away and, and sweep them around. It's in this damp, dark pra- places that actually is conducive for your problems to grow. Yeah. And you've got to learn to say, hey, I've got to be honest with myself. And I say it like this all the time. True honesty is what leads to true growth. That's good. But true honesty is not always easy to stomach. Yeah. So sometimes it's not easy to lay all these problems out on the floor. Sometimes you don't want to know how bad you are financially. Yeah. Sometimes you don't want to know how bad people are talking about you. Sometimes you don't want to know how bad your systems are that people – like sometimes you just want to ignore it and act like they, they'll just go away. Mm-hmm. But the reality is if you don't ever lay out all your cards on the table and be honest with yourself and say, okay, I'm not going to find the quick solution – I'm going to find the right solution because yeah. I'm trying to build this thing for long-term success, not short, short-term relief. You won't ever get there unless you can be honest and look at the facts and be truthful about the facts. Nobody likes to hear negative things about themselves. Right. Nobody wants to hear something they're doing is not working, right? Yeah. We, we've said this before in our earlier podcast, but we do surveys out there, mm-hmm. and they're anonymous, so people can be honest, because yeah. we want to know what the weakest area in our church is so we can work on it. Yeah. And guess what? Gut reaction, every time you hear the weakest areas, you go, no, we're not. Right. Like we're, we're, we're good at that, yeah. because cause you know what you want out of the outcome, or you know what your heart is, but other people don't care necessarily what your heart is they right. care what they're experiencing right so you may not have impure motives or or failing because you want to on purpose sometimes you're doing it and you don't even know you're doing it yeah. and if you keep ignoring the problems or the facts guess what those problems are just going to become massive yeah and they're going to destroy what you're trying to build yeah that's really good i want to switch gears a little bit and start talking about uh solution oriented from a from a staff perspective so uh, as leaders, we obviously have many responsible or problems that we're responsible for solving. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think many leaders feel a responsibility to also solve their staff's problems. Mm-hmm. Are our staff's day to day problems our responsibility to come up with a solution for? Well, you know the answer, right? Like you know, no, like right. you know, you're not supposed to be a micromanager. But let's just be honest with ourselves. We are. A lot of times we hold ourselves accountable for that, yeah. Well, we're responsible for their fruit, okay? 
we're responsible for what's going on in the organization, whether they're succeeding or not succeeding. Yeah. That weight is on your shoulders, right? Mm-hmm. You can't push the blame. Yeah. However, you're not responsible to be their parent. Right. You're responsible to create them to be solution-minded yeah. leaders. But let's just be honest with ourselves. As leaders, we like to be know-it-alls. Yeah. We like to be the Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. We like everybody coming to us and being like, you're so wise. You're Yoda. You're my Yoda, right? We want to be that wise, sage person that be able to have to be the smartest person in the room. The problem is, is if you're the smartest person in the room, you are putting a cap on the how far your organization can go. That's good. You've got to allow your leaders to surpass you. Yeah. And you've got to empower them to be at a place where they can grow beyond you. And so you've got to sometimes suck it up Mm -hmm. and bite your tongue when you want to give them the answer and help them realize they have the answers within them. Yeah. So what you do is you're responsible for whether or not they're successful but you're also responsible for whether or not they can find that success and solution on their own. Yeah. And what do I mean by that? That means when you're coaching them, you're letting them understand they know the answer, mm-hmm. even though they don't know it. Yeah. So you're asking them questions, and you're asking them their opinion, and you're allowing them to wrestle with the problem yeah. so they can find the answer to it. Yeah. And so quick, it's easier and faster, it's kind of what we talked about earlier, right? It's faster for them to come and ask you a question, you immediately give them the answer. Yeah. But that's not sustainable right. and it's not scalable. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're putting a cap on how big and how far your organization can reach. Right. Yeah. I think I I I love that. And what you're doing is you're you're leading them to the to the answer, mm-hmm. to that that solution. Yes. Um I also think just from the aspect of letting your staff know that we don't expect you to know everything. Really? You know what I mean? Like, that. that is so important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you mean you don't know everything? I don't know everything. I mean, I mean, I pretty much know everything <laughs> in the oh, world, course, right? Like, right? right? <laughs> I mean, that's a ludicrous mentality to right. think that, right? Like, yeah. being solution-oriented isn't being the most wisest person in the world knowing everything. Being solution-oriented is identifying a problem and then wanting to fix it yeah and sometimes wanting to fix it means you have to search for the answer because you don't really know the answer you have to you have to try to figure out what's not working and what can be working so yeah yeah you're not going to know everything your staff's not going to know everything nobody's going to know everything the problem i think most people get into it is know it they think they're they think they do know it and i always say like this know it all is know nothing yeah right yeah when you think you know it all and you think you can't learn, you have already set yourself up for failure. That's right. I am a pastor of a very fast-growing church. Mm -hmm. I'm very honored that God's given me that kind of success and platform and and given us that impact. But I never, ever want to be the type of person that walks into an environment thinking I know more than the person I'm stepping into that environment with. I learn from pastors that have churches much smaller than us, yeah. but they're wiser than what I am, and, and they understand more than me, because size is is relative. Yeah. Health is everything, yeah. right? Yeah. And so learning to grow in every situation and realizing you don't know everything, but you can learn to grow from other people in other areas is the greatest aspect you could be at. Yeah. And when you can instill that in your staff to realize they don't have to be know-it-alls, yeah. but they can be solution minded without knowing all the solutions right up front yep. gives them this level of confidence that they can become these adventurers and discover yeah. something they never knew was possible and see health in ways they never knew was possible that's yeah. powerful that is so powerful um and so when helping a member uh, a staff member walk through or, or leading them to a mm-hmm. to a solution how important is your follow-up then on that well, I mean, if they don't know the answer and they might walk out of that meeting not knowing the answer, yeah. then you want to follow back up with them to right. see where they're at in discovering that answer, right? Because mm-hmm. maybe they say, I need to do some research. and yeah. right. But secondly, they may even come to an idea of how they could fix the problem, but you need to be following up to see are they actually following through yeah. on their idea for that solution. So follow-up, of course, is, is imperative in every aspect of leading. Coaching 
is not giving this advice and dropping coaching is I'm stepping with you every step of the way yeah. to see where you are in the phases of your growth as the leader or the organization or the problem. Yeah. Because what they need to realize is they have someone there in their corner, mm-hmm. right? They need someone there in the corner to say, I got you. Yeah. I see you. I'm inspired by you. I believe in you. You need that as you're going through, right? Yeah. We as coaches can't be in the ring fighting for them, right? But we can be on the outside telling them, "Come on, champ. Yeah. He's getting wore out, yeah. right? You got this, right? Yeah. Right? Hey, I see this. You're dropping your guard a little bit here. Like, let's pick up. Like, yeah. you can be in their corner along the way. Yeah, that's what we're responsible for 100%. as leaders. It's not solving the problem, but it's the continual leadership 100%. through the problem. Um, so how do you build a culture of problem solvers on your staff, not problem dwellers? Well, it's very simple. Are they motivated by action or are they motivated by nostalgia? Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Because complainers always think back of the good old days. Right? Mm-hmm. And they always think it's everybody else's problem. But people that are motivated by action are people that are never satisfied with the wins now because they always believe bigger wins are coming tomorrow, right? It's not that we don't celebrate what we've done, but we realize that's just the beginning, right? Right. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can comprehend what God has in store for us, right? So we believe that we have great wins now, but we're just getting started being children of God. And he's got even greater wins. And so we're always looking forward because solution-oriented minded people are going, how can I be better? How can I grow? How can I continue to have more of an impact? And that's what I do on a daily basis. I, I sit back and I think, man, there's a lot of areas that I fall short in, and I'm always trying to evaluate how can I grow in that area mm-hmm. personally, as a leader, as a parent, as a spouse, and as a church as a whole. Where all I'm always looking at, I want our people to be healthy yeah. and spiritually growing, yeah. and I want to make sure we have the conducive systems and, and procedures and the people in place to see them become even more healthier. It starts with me, whether I'm healthy, it starts with my family, it starts with the way we're running our systems. And so when we have action in mind, we're constantly wanting to solve problems and not sit back and dwell on how great we were in the past. But what more impact can we have in the future? That's good. Uh, And then next question, a two-part question here is, if you have problem dwellers, how do you coach them up? And then if you could touch on are they a threat to the organization? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll start with they are a threat with the organization if they stay problem dwellers, yeah. right? And there's just some people that they're just not at a place they want to receive anything yeah. from you. I mean, you can't you can't change people. Yeah. You can you can inspire people, you can encourage people, you can champion people, you can give people feedback, but people have to want to change themselves. Yeah. And there's some people, listen to me, because so there's some staff members are right now, leaders right now, they're thinking, you know what, I've tried to talk to my people, but they just, all they do is want to complain. Right. They want, like, okay, if you've had honest conversations with them multiple times, right, and they're just not wanting to grow, you know, you can't fully, you know, allow that to continue to pollute your yeah. organization. But I will tell you how you can change someone from that's critical into someone that is solution minded. And why doing that is asking them their opinion. Yeah. When they come to you with a problem, what you say is, well, how would you fix that? Yeah. What do you think is the solution to this problem? Mm -hmm. Or how can we be better? Yeah. Now, you don't have to take their advice, but it always honors people for you to hear their advice. Yeah. So when someone says, oh, they want to hear from me, you honor them. Yeah. And even if you don't do what they say, they still feel like they have an honored position with you they have a voice they have a voice and that shifts something in their personality okay and now guess what they're gonna be a little bit more receptive to you as a leader yeah so the best way to take a critic and turn them into somebody constructive is by asking them how they would take that situation and make it healthier or better and guess what sometimes they're gonna say something that you didn't think of Mm -hmm. and it is better yeah and sometimes they're gonna say something you go i wish i had that idea and it's gonna be awesome 
Yeah. So you need to learn that and really build that into it. Yeah, I think that's so powerful. And honestly, this this entire talk today has been so powerful and it flows right into what we're going to be talking about next week, which is setting the bar high because excellence reflects character. Come on, come on. I'm excited, guys. I'm so glad you tuned in with us today. Man, become solution-oriented, yeah. not problem-oriented. If you're listening to us on the podcast, make sure you subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe and ring-a-ding that bell so you never miss an episode again. And also make sure you share it, rate it, and review it. Until next week, family, we pray God's peace.